Hello pilots and welcome back to Flying with Overkill F-18C Hornet and today we'll be doing part two of our air-to-air -air radar tutorial. I am going to preface each video with the uh, previous information that if you do not have a clear understanding of what the radar does and how it does it, then I am going to absolutely recommend that you stop this video and um, check out the links in the description below as they will take you to a tutorial series that I did a while back when I was using the F-15 on um, the radar and how it functions and it breaks down um, both its weaknesses its advantages let you see visually how the radar cone actually works and what is displayed where its dead zones are and etc um, you really need to make sure that you guys have a clear understanding of how radar works that way you know how to manipulate the radar if you lose contact or if you're searching for a contact that you feel like you should be seeing based on range and altitude and such so anyway, and also there will be a link in the description for part one of this tutorial series. So if you guys are interested in watching that, go ahead and check that one out. That's where we went over all the different buttons and what they mean and what they do. And today, guys, we are going to be looking at range while search, but we're going to be looking at range while search in its most basic form, meaning that we're going to be turning some of the other advanced features on the radar off. All right, so let's go ahead and get on into it. So let's make this our sensor of interest. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you guys a couple of tips before we get rolling. Okay, so a lot of these functions that we use on the radar, such as changing our uh, display range, changing our bars, changing our um, pulse repetition frequency, um, a lot of that can be changed without actually moving, going to the uh, OSBs. So first let's talk about the display range. If we want to move the display range up and down, all we have to do is take our TDC and slightly pass over the uh, threshold of the display and then go back in real quick. And same thing with going in reverse, and I'll show you what that looks like. So to come up, you guys can see is you have to go out of the box, okay? So up, up, okay? And then same thing coming back down. So it's a pretty handy uh, little tool there makes it a lot easier to um, set your display range uh, without actually having to take your hand off the controls. The other one is the bars. Okay, this one's really handy. So you just mouse over, then find the desired bar you want, and then simply press your target designate button, and then come back down. Okay? Um, <clears throat> same thing with silence. You simply bring your TDC up, press your target designate. Okay, and let's see what else that works for. We can, I think, do active. Okay, let's take it out of silence. Now you can also use, you can't use like the R, RWS, you can't switch modes. You can't switch to the ground radar. You can't switch your priority. You can't switch your interleave. Okay, at least I don't think so. Let's try this real quick. Nope. Now you can change your azimuth, but let me show you what's going on. I believe there's a bug in progress right now, because check it out, if we mouse down, you can't see it and what it does if you guys want to try playing around with it is it does the same thing that the bars do okay it opens it up like that and you sort of select the one you want and so the default here I believe is 40 so if we were to sort of move over a little bit there's 20 I believe that will take us back into 40 this should be 80 nope 60 And there's 140 but you guys get the gist right so um i don't know why it's disappearing like that like i said i'm pretty sure it's a bug i'm sure ed will figure it out and fix it for us but anyway so just a couple of little tips that i thought you guys might find interesting before we got started all right so now let's go ahead and get into what we're here for today and we're going to talk about range wall search range wall search is great when you want to check a lot of sky and you want to be able to monitor a bunch of targets where it's not effective is engaging multiple targets okay if you have a single target that you're tracking and you don't want to lose track on it um range wall search is the way to go because what happens when you lock a target is you go into what's called single target track which means 100 percent of the radar's energy goes after that one target and maintains that lock as best as possible okay there are obviously still scenarios in which you could lose the radar lock but you know it's significantly less likely than with tws and that's the advantage of track wall scan, which we'll go over here pretty quick in either the next um, video or the one after. Excuse me. So with TWS, you can lock multiple targets, okay, up to two simultaneously. 
you can engage two simultaneous targets and you can also be still monitoring uh, a portion of the sky and that portion is dependent on what your azimuth is and what your bars are set to and we'll go over that again more in depth when we talk about TWS but um, so limited sky but you still can track multiple bands at the same time while engaging multiple bands at the same time however they are more likely to break the radar lock in that scenario um, as not as much as the radar energy is being used to maintain the lock on those targets and again we'll get more into that later on but so range wall search you can see a bunch of the sky and you get a very very solid lock on your targets um, but you can only lock and engage one target at a time Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at a couple things. So first thing that I want to do though is, as you can see, the TDC here is yellow. So we've gone into our data tab. The TDC is yellow, and that's because we have a couple of color options, and there's yellow, red, and green that are available with these three colors. If you want everything to be green, you can just tap that, and everything's green, okay? MSI, we're going to disable this, and what this does is in yellow boxing, it displays the um, anything that the data link 16 is um, tracking okay so we want to make sure that we move uh, that today because we don't want it to be tracking anything from data link we want only the radar the uh, APG 73 to be displaying and then we're also going to disable uh, latent track wall scan or LTWIS and the reason why we're doing that is again I want to show you guys range wall search in its raw form so we're going to shut latent track wall scan off and the last thing I'm going to show you while we're in here actually two things we'll show you is this declutter button if it is on by default as you guys can see I did not go in here and select this so if you uncheck it what you get on the radar scope is your horizon line and your velocity vector indicator your VBI and this is real handy if you have to dedicate a lot of time to the uh, radar scope and you want to make sure that you're still able to monitor what your flight path is looking like in relation to the horizon Okay, I typically keep it off. I like to keep my screen clear. Now, there's declutter one and declutter two. I can't see a difference between the two. If you guys know what that is, by all means, throw it in the comments below because I haven't, I haven't seen it in DCS. Okay, and actually, I'm gonna show you two more things, not one. You also have your bra. Okay, which in our case we get bearing and range at the TDC location. So you can see as we move the TDC around. We talked about this briefly in the last one, but you can see what its current range is on the display scope. And then what its bearing is based on our um, current heading um, to us, right? <clears throat> and the last thing I want to show you is this. This is how long in seconds it will take for a radar contact to fade off of the display once it's been painted on. Okay. Now, what's the advantages and disadvantages? Well, advantages obviously is you can get a better picture of what's going on around you for a little bit longer. Oops, sorry about that, guys. The disadvantages what you can get is false impressions of an aircraft so you get a contact here okay and from the time the contact shows up it's going to take 16 seconds for that contact to come back or to go away and so what can happen is picture this so contact lights up contacts moving contact lights up again contacts moving lights up again right so you can essentially have multiple um, impressions on your or bricks as we call it or uh, file tracks or track files um, on your screen but truly only one aircraft, okay? So I typically keep this pretty short, about four seconds, okay? I don't go much higher than that. Um, now you may find scenarios where you prefer to have it longer, but anyway, that's how you set that. So we've got everything set up for us now. Let's go ahead and come out of the data screen and let's start talking radar edge stuff, all right? <clears throat> so in our previous tutorial, we obviously talked about this is our azimuth bar. We're currently scanning at 140 degrees. That's 70 to the left, 70 to the right. Okay. We can maintain lock on any aircraft that we have designated as a target as long as we keep within those boundaries. Range ball search, as I just discussed previously, when we find a target, okay, we're going to be able to see multiple aircraft, as many aircraft as within the radar beam. Okay. Um, but once we lock a target, we're going to lose track of everything else except for the aircraft we've locked. Okay. But speaking to the advantage one more time is it's very, very, um, I wouldn't, I actually, I don't want to say unlikely. It's much more difficult for the opposing pilot to lose us on the radar lock and a single target track. Okay. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and bring up our radio menu here and let's get a bird in the sky. And actually, let's get a couple birds in the sky.
There we go. All right, so, so far, we've got nothing out here. Now, we're standing six bars. Remember, what we talked about the six bars this is our altitude scan, right? So, you know, if we're looking out the window, it's going, it's working its way up and down its altitude range. So, right now, it's scanning at about 30 miles, and it's going all the way up to 52,000 feet and working its way to the ground level in six bars, and then back up. And each sweep is one. So that's one, and it goes down a little bit, and it goes down a little bit further, and it goes down a little bit further. And this is all altitude. Don't think of it as range. Okay? So, and you can see right here on the elevation carrot as it works through the bars. So now it's going to go back up. Okay? Anyway, so let's go ahead and bring our radar scope range up a bit and see if we can't pick up some targets. So you know what? Here's what I was talking about there. If you can see they're starting to fade out. Let's, let's go back in the data for a second. Let's take this down to two, so you guys can see how they disappear. It's gone, boom. Gone, boom, okay? So that's what I'm meaning by what that timer does. And so if we bump it up to eight, you can sort of see they're starting to fade out, but then they're back. It's starting to fade out, and they're back. And if you leave that on for an extended period of time, This is what I was talking about earlier, that it can almost look like you have multiple contacts when you don't. Okay, you can see how they're sort of starting to stack on top of each other, but this is all the same group of aircraft, okay? Now, I do think this is three aircraft here, and this is two back here, but you guys get what I'm getting at here, that it can give you a false impression that there's more aircraft than what's actually out there. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that turned back down. Leave it about four for now, that'll be good. Okay, so now let's start talking about locking up an aircraft okay so this is called a brick or a file track okay and it's called a brick because of its shape okay and it uh, does identify here as an aircraft okay so what we're going to do is I'm going to mouse over and I'm going to hit my target designate button here you can see the radar focuses in on it and then we get our half foo I'm going to pause for a second this is the half foo hostile ambiguous friendly or unknown Okay, and that's what this uh, bracket here is. Here you have the uh, contact heading indicator, so it lets us know that the aircraft is traveling in a um, sort of an offset position. Over here we have our closure rate, okay, this is 850 knots closure rate. Now for those of you who don't understand what closure rate is, it's our airspeed with their airspeed at what distance and at what speed they're closing it. So let me make this a little bit easier to understand. If we are traveling at 300 knots and our opponent is traveling at 300 knots and we are going exactly head on to each other, that's going to be a 600 knot closure. If we are traveling at 300 knots and our opponent is traveling at 400 knots but going the opposite direction, they're flying away from us, that's going to be a negative 100 knots closure, meaning that the distance between us is actually expanding at 100 knots, okay? Here we have the angle offset from our aircraft to the target. The radar is making a downward slope of negative 9.8 degrees, and that's because we're at 19,500, just shy of 20,000 feet, and he's at 10,000 feet that we see right here. This is the altitude, and this is the speed in Mach. So we have our aircraft here, our opponent here at 0.5 Mach and 10,000 feet. Okay, we can mouse over it. Oops, if I unpause it, that would be helpful. Um, <clears throat> you can also see it's 225 degrees. That is the heading of our opponent. Okay, and then here we have our range scale, right? So we have a top of 80, not, or 80 nautical miles, 60, 40, 20, and obviously on our nose and, and trying to kiss us. Okay, so we can extrapolate here that our aircraft here is at approximately call it 50 nautical miles, about 53 nautical miles away. Okay, so let's go ahead and unpause. Oops, I already did unpause, didn't I? Yep, there we go. All right, so now let's go up to the HUD and take a look at some information we're getting up there now that we're in single target track. Okay, so let me go ahead and lock my camera up again if I can get my finger on the right button. Let's take a look at what we've got right here so far. Now, I want you guys to be aware of something. We are not in an air-to-air -air mode right now. All we've done is locked in with the radar. We do not have our weapon set. The aircraft is not in air-to-air -air mode. Okay, so the first thing to recognize is that 
you can see the rectangle here or the square here indicating that we have our priority target okay this is a target designated uh, box okay if it is flashing and I've just unpaused you can see it's not but if it was flashing it would mean that this contact is actually outside of our HUD field of view okay here we have our closure rate just like we saw on the radar 850 knots we have a range of 47.4 nautical miles okay and all we need now is some weapon information so let's go ahead and bring up the AMRAM and so I'm going to use and I'll show you guys I've showed you guys this a long time ago but I'll show them to you again these are the quick keys to activate the different air-to-air -air weapons and these are all every single one of these will put you in air-to-air -air mode if you're not in there already so you have the AMRAM, your gun, your sidewinder, and your sparrow. I highly recommend you guys map these to your HOTAS. You know, um, I map them on the stick as they have here. All right. So I'm going to push forward and get my AMRAMs loaded up. And you'll watch us go into air to air mode. So then what we get now is we get the, what's called the LAR. And the LAR is the um, launch acceptable region. Okay. And the idea behind it is you want to get this dot. This is our sh uh, steering cue. We want to get this dot inside this circle, ideally in an ideal situation before we fire our missile. Okay. So let's go ahead and come back up for a second. So now you guys can see up here we have our range cue right here. That's going to work its way down the circle here. And then here we have what's called R max. This indicates the maximum range that the AMRAM, which you can see here, this is A for AMRAM, the type, which is C, the M120C, and here's how many we have on board. Okay, so here's the maximum range that we can use the AMRAM. Once this little line here passes through there, we're ready to shoot, and we'll actually get a shoot cue. It'll actually say shoot up here. Then once it passes this little diamond here, or this triangle, excuse me, um, we will be in what's called the no escape or no turn and run. And it's not impossible, but your opponent's odds of defeating the missile once fired in this range become very, very slim. Okay, and then here is the our min, which is the minimum range that the missile can be safely employed. All right, so let's start putting some of this together here. So we're going to take our target box and our little dot steering cue, and we're going to put it inside our LAR. Okay, this is an ideal situation. And keep watching our range queue as it starts to close. And you can see the exact same information down here on the HUD or on the um, radar. You can see our closure rate has increased. And by the way, as your target starts to fall closer to the bottom of the radar scope, this number will drop as it just did. It will automatically adjust to your target's range. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and speed time up a little bit here. I'm gonna stay up at altitude for a minute. Ish. All right, so we're approaching our max. So watch above the square box. There's the shoot cue, but I don't wanna shoot yet ideally unless I'm in a threatening situation, which I can promise you being the mission creator, I'm in no danger. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait for the turn no escape. So there it is, and you can see that once we get into the turn no escape zone, it starts flashing, okay? That's ideally when you wanna pull the trigger. So, Fox 3. And then, pause. Now this says six seconds to target. There's one other scenario that you may see here. What this means that the missile, the AMRAM, went what we call pitbull the second it left the aircraft. Pitbull it means the missile's own onboard radar has taken over acquisition of the target and no longer needs us to hold a radar lock. It means it's fire and forget once you see it TTG. If it's not and it still needs us, what you will see is a timer and then ACT. And until the ACT goes away, you must maintain radar lock of the target because the missile's getting its telemetry information from the host, which is us. Okay, and then once it switches to TTG, you can turn and run, break lock, target lock, doesn't matter, and hope the missile does its job. And so here we go. Watch for that pretty little splash in the sky. Skadoosh! That was actually really cool. 
Let me see if I can find us one more, and let's use the AIM-7 Sparrow for a second. All right, so we're set to the AIM-7. And let's bring her around. Let's try not crashing into the ground this time. And let's see if we can't find our targets. All right, so we have a new contact coming into the radar scope. So I'm going to bring him in. I've already locked it. Okay. 13 nautical miles out. We got 620 knots closer, 650 as we keep turning. It's still blinking, so it's outside the HUD's field of view. You can see this arrow right here telling us what direction he is and the degrees that he's off center. So he's 17 degrees coming around, coming around. 10 degrees, there we go. And now let's see his distance. He's just coming into our max or uh, turn no escape, excuse me. Now, there we go. We've got everything. It's in the LAR. We got our shoot cue, Fox 1. Now, well, this is an AIM 7, so here's what we have to do. We can still turn, but we have to keep that bandit inside the radar gimbal limit, so we can't go outside 70 degrees. So let's keep turning. We can keep turning. We can keep turning. We can keep turning. But we want to hold it right about there, okay? And there was the splash. So you can still you can still start your turn. You can still start preparing to get out. You can still start preparing to set up for the next track with even with the uh, AIM-7. But single target track um, is pretty powerful. I mean, like I said, it uses the full gimbal of the radar. Um, but again, we lose everything else that's out there while we're engaging. And the other thing is, while you don't have a target locked, you can see the weapon that you have selected right here and how many you have. So we have one AIM-7 left. If I switch to the AIM-120C, you can see we have four left. Okay, if I go to my side winders, you can see the 9X times two. All right. So anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial about range wall search in its most basic form. The next time we'll take a look at TWS. And then after TWS, we'll take a look at the radar in its default configuration, which is range wall search with latent track wall scan. So a little column A, a little of column B, wrap it all together. After that, we'll go over each individual missile and its um, advantages, disadvantages, some cool tips to using them. Then we'll take a look at the uh, joint helmet mounted cubing system. Then we'll go into our air combat modes. And then I think that will probably wrap up the F-18C Hornet with flying with overkill until something new comes out or I need to make an update. So stay tuned, guys. Not too many left. Also, I'll be posting a poll soon as far as which aircraft you guys would like to see next. I'm thinking about the F-16 or the JF-17. Um, or we can try a Warbird, so possibly a helicopter. By all means, let me know. Start throwing those comments down below. And I will see you guys in the next one.